Good afternoon, traders, and welcome to another edition of Awesome Calls Trading, a trade review, uh, recap, live webinar recap. I am AJ. I am your host today, and today was just another great day of trading. My morning, my trading was pretty much done in pre-market. I got up early enough to, to catch the Tesla uh, news on it, um, but today we traded a lot of great stocks, APT, uh, Revolve, Myrna, Space, Weight Watchers, Alarm, Planet. GW, Beyond, Tesla, Penn, Pod, and STC. Uh, to me, um, let's just start with Tesla uh, right off the bat. Tesla was the big winner in our chat room, especially for me as a trader. Uh, but Tesla was gapping down this morning on the idea that um, they were they were gapping down because Panasonic, which I can't even believe is still around, uh, but Panasonic is. Uh, closing their solar panel plant or whatever, anything to do with solar stuff. And I kind of looked at it, and I just kind of like, well, that has nothing to do with Tesla. Uh, if anything, the market's gapping up. So I went ahead and went long here uh, this morning in pre-market at uh, 775. And in pre-market, the stock, as you can see, uh, ran all the way up to... Uh, 794 20 point trade in pre-market I caught 10 of it and I was out right about here at 785 81 I did show you the the, the timestamps and my P&L and uh, that, that was done when the market opened it I went ahead and played a few more um, I couldn't resist but what I did for the room was this is where I really like it when I can pretty much make my daily um, when it opened, I was really walking the stock up to 805, and that was really the call. If the stock popped to 790, I wanted everyone to long it to 805, and I wrote that down, 805. I actually put 800 to 810, it should go to, and it hit 805. And once it broke 792, I told everyone, 792 is your key. You break that, you play it. And I saw so many traders just bank that so nice and it hit all the way to 805 and then came down uh, this extra move another client asked me in the room AJ when can I go long the stock I said I would probably long it at 802 uh, 802 uh, would be the, the breakout here off that flag and I would take it to 810 and the stock ended up going to 814 so I, I gave a lot of opportunity for traders to do very well in the stock and uh, it was really a great play the next one we played was pod this is an earnings play that about 99.99% .99 of you outside of awesome calls will not trade. But in our room, it's a great it's a great trading vehicle. We called a long at the open at around 185, 186 to go to gap fill to 192, 193. The stock actually gap filled to 198 for more money, and then we sold it off back down to 180. The next one we did also to follow that was a stock called Penn. We just went over this for about a good 20 minutes in secret sauce. Why pin was a buying opportunity. We were buyers this morning at 160 to 158 per my notes. I had it written down that anything under 160 is a buying opportunity. We started picking it up on that pullback, and we ended up getting about a total. It is fully gap filled, if not more, for a total of 17 points to the upside. And the stock is being held up because it shouldn't have been down to begin with. The next talk that we did was GWPH. This was up on, uh, this was actually gapping down on earnings. They were mixed. They weren't as good as investors wanted. And uh, on this one, what we did is I've played this and I understand the stock now. So I really, truly wanted just to get a pop at the open to 115, scale in short, and then take it down. You don't believe the 115 was the call? GWPH is right there. Uh, this should pop at the open. To 112 you can chase it for a quick move to 115 and then an all-day sell-off dump all right the next one we did was a stock called alarm a lot of you don't trade alarm we do alarm I read the report I was not impressed it was a thin stock gapping up I wanted to short the 48 with room to 50 and the stock was going to come down to 46 for at least a two to four point play I wanted alarm to come up come down and be done with it so this is alarm and it was sitting here in pre-market right there and so I, I wanted everyone to take short at 48 room to 50 if it popped and then slam it down to 46 
double bottomed at 46 and that was all she wrote we were done with that stock in just a matter of a, a two minutes of the opening bell the next stock that i did was uh revolve okay now this was a very interesting play today um i really wanted this to hang, come down below 16. but the way i traded this uh the way i put this out was pretty okay I first wanted a point. I wanted to push it at the open, at, on the opening bell to about 17. I had it 17 to 17 and a half dollars on a revolve right here. I'll show it to you. Revolve. Um, if it opened at 16.50, I wanted you to get 17 to 17.50. In the end, I felt the stock would come down and fade to 16 and under. Okay. If it pulled, I wanted everyone to buy it. If it pulled to 14.50 at the open. Revolve had a lot of downgrades, price target downgrades. Not a lot of people were happy about it. So on this particular stock, I simply just wanted to pop it, fade it, and break it and snap it. If it didn't, and it kept holding above that 16, I wanted to long the stock for that one and a half and then fade the stock. So it, it did what I wanted. It just took a little extra time to do it. Um, and uh, once it peaked up here, it just collapsed. That's really, and it fell below the $16. The next stock I did, uh, which was a really good play, uh, I believe was Myrna. Myrna was, uh, had earnings today, so they were kind of all over the place in pre-market. They had the conference call going on. But to me, Erna, this, this gap up, Janny called it perfectly in pre-market um, to short the stock at 27, I think 60, and he took it down. When I came in the chat room, I looked at it and I said, I like this to pop at the open to 28 to 29 and then short the stock and if you don't believe me this is what i wrote on myrna it was our number two or three pick myrna uh let it squeeze to 29 plus and then short the stock two to three points to the downside it'll be sweet cash money and that's exactly what the stock did push that open to 29 29 90 and then slam down two to three points per my notes there's one there's two there's three and you were done there was no way this was going to gap fill there was not, I didn't say it would gap fill. It was just simply a stock that was going to pop and pull back down for sweet money. Next stock we had was Beyond. Beyond, I felt, with the news with Starbucks, okay, one thing you have to learn about Beyond is that, you know, until they, these people, they keep, uh, oh, hold on one second. So what I did was, when I looked at this, I said to myself, okay, on this particular stock, um, you know, you have to understand, they're, they're, they're doing test models all over the place, and that's great, but until Starbucks or McDonald's or, and we won't know this until we see the report, but until there's an actual contract showing we are going to buy this much supply from you, that's when it's going to truly make its move. Until then... Um, it, a lot of it just is a pop and fade. Great, it's Starbucks, just like McDonald's. But again, and the other thing is they keep testing it in Canada. It, it, they don't even test it in the U.S. I don't know why they do that. And I really like to know why one day and somebody would sit down with me and tell me. But when I see that too, it would be different if they were testing across the United States, but they're testing in Canada. So it kind of just kind of confused me a little bit. So on this one, I kind of wanted to short a 118 with room to 120. And then I wanted to short the stock. And I had this coming down to 112 uh, for today. I knew it would stay up on a gap, but I didn't. I, did, I felt 112 would be the bottom on it, which was right uh, beyond. Uh, there's the 110 to 112. And the stock hit exactly like 111, I think it did. So I did uh, 111.50 or something like that. So I did good on that one. All right, and then the next one that we had, uh, boy, we had so many. I think space. Let me see what I wanted to do on space. I think I wanted to short space. Yes, I did. On space, I wanted to pop it open to 33.50 and then a short um, and then come back down to 29.50 and under. Um, in the morning, if it pulled um, to 29.50, I wanted everyone to go long, but 
uh, initially I just wanted to see the puppet open to 33 to 33.50. And this was, keep in mind, this is from $31 this morning, and then I wanted to sell off. And as you can tell, it did exactly what I wanted. I'll show it to you. Right, so ding, 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 ding. Here we are at 31, the opening bell. It took it up to 33.71 per my notes and came right back down. Uh, the fact it made another move because the CSC CEO was on CNBC talking, so it kind of shut up a little bit. As soon as it got done talking, it sold off, which just seems to be the customary thing that goes on on those. The next stock I did was um, Pod Pen. GW Beyond Planet Alarm Alarm uh, Planet was really good. What was better? Uh, Myrna Space Revolve. I think Planet was really good. Uh, Planet was basically a stock that um, I needed the stock to. I wanted to kind of push at the open. It had a lot of upgrades on price targets this morning. So after reading, uh, doing my research, I felt, you know what, let's get a pop at the open. And here's the opening bell right here. Ding, 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 ding. I kind of wanted the pop at the open to hit that 78 area. And then I wanted to scale in short and take it down uh, for a fader on it. And that's what I called on planet. And ding, 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 ding. Here's the pop at open to 78 per my notes. And then I wanted it to fade down. I, I figured a little bit more downside. It only gave us three points to the downside, but it was still a very good call. And one last note that I gave yesterday was uh, Batai. This was a really good play. This stock had sold off all the way to $28.50. And this and we were picking it up here. Uh, stock ended up going up to $35 a share. It became another buying opportunity again at $31.32. And uh, just a nice play here. Uh, the sell-off was just overdone yesterday. But uh, I won't do a chart on that. That was just a more of an internal call for somebody who was just asking me a question. And I said, yeah, I'd pick it up. Actually... I was doing very well yesterday, and I, I started picking it up. I got impatient. I just said, okay, I'm done with it. And if I had stayed with it, I would have added a few more dollars to my, my bank account. But that is today's uh, live recap webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate all of you. You're awesome. I look forward to trading with you tomorrow. Take care.